In this lesson, we are going to continue with our introduction to using formulas in 6.1 as rearranging the formulas. As you remember, the formulas that uh, you have seen so far, they are consisted of either two variables or three or more. There are cases that you have to find the value of a variable in terms of other variables. The question is that how can I isolate different variables? Now, if you remember about solving linear equations, we did the process of solving for a variable, let's say, x by moving or isolating x on one side of the equal sign and all the numbers or constants on the other side. Just to remind you that whenever we moved one item from one side to another one, we were changing the sign of the variable or the constant. This moving around is exactly the process of using the opposite operation. If you remember from grade 9, we said that the operation addition has the opposite uh, operation which is subtraction or subtraction the opposite operation to it is addition the same way multiplication opposite to multiplication is division and opposite of division is multiplication we also know that the opposite to square operation is square root <coughs> or opposite to square root is squaring knowing these facts it's very easy to isolate one variable in terms of another one so let's do a few examples here the first example I have the formula which I can find the amount of investment A in terms of initial investment P and the interest earned I. The question that I have to solve is isolating P, initial investment. We start with the original one which is A is equal to P plus I. I would like to have P by itself isolated. So either I can move, I can keep P on the left or P on the right. I decide to keep P on the right. So this means that I have to do the opposite operation of addition, which is for investment. So I'm going to move investment to the left, but remember you will change the sign. So this will make P is equal to A minus i because i becomes negative i the next example is the volume of a rectangular prism or just simply a box the volume is given by v is equal to length times width times height i have to isolate height now i decide to keep height on the right and everything else on the left now if you look at L and W here they are multiplied by H so I have to do the opposite operation which is division by L and W so I get V divided by L W is L W H divided by L W W cancels W L cancels L <coughs> So I get H is V over LW. The next example, I have the Ohm's law, which relates voltage, resistance, and the current. By the formula, V is equal to RI, which V is the voltage, R is the resistance, and I is the current. In the circuit I'm supposed to isolate I so 
I go, I'm deciding to keep I on the right, everything else on the left. The problem is R. Now R is multiplied by I, so I'm going to do the reverse operation, which is division by R. R is going to cancel R, so I'm going to get I is equal to V over R. The next example gives you an idea what is the purpose of solving formulas or isolating one variable for another one. In this example, I have a formula which converts the temperature in degrees to temperature in Fahrenheit or vice versa. I have been given that the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius and I have to find the same temperature in Fahrenheit which is given by the formula as F. Now if you look at the formula, the formula is F on the right and C is isolated. But I have to have F isolated and find F in terms of C because C is given. So I have to isolate F. Now to isolate F I'm going to do the first operation. I'm going to get rid of the denominator here. To get rid of 9, I'm going to multiply both sides by 9. So I multiply this guy by 9 and this variable by 9. So I get 9c is equal to 5 times f minus 32. Still, the formula is not isolated for f. So I have to get rid of 5 now. To get rid of 5, I'm going to divide everything by 5. So I get f minus 32, because 5 cancels with 5, is equal to 9c over 5. If you have noticed, I wrote the equation the other way around. Instead of having f minus 3 on the right, I wrote it on the left, which is the same thing. It doesn't matter if I write x is equal to 5 or 5 is equal to x. It's, it has the same meaning. So f minus 32 is 9c over 5. Now I have to get rid of 32, so I'm going to move 32 to the right and change the sign. So f becomes 9c over 5 plus 32. Now to find the Fahrenheit equivalent to 30 degrees Celsius, I'm going to sub 30 in this formula and then solve and simplify. If you simplify this one, F becomes 270 divided by 5 plus 32, which is approximately is equal to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. In the next example, I have the area of a circle which if you remember is given by a is equal to pi r squared, pi is the 3.14. I have to find the radius if the area is 5 square kilometers. To solve this one and find r, I have to isolate r. The problem right now is pi, so I'm going to divide by pi both sides, so I get r squared because pi cancels with pi, is equal to a over pi. Now, we, we said at the beginning of the lesson that the opposite operation of square is square root. So from here, I get square root of r square is square root of a over pi. Square root of r square is the same as r, is equal to square root of a over pi. Now I have an isolated radius in terms of area. So I just substitute back the 5 kil square kilometers in the equation to find r. So I get r is equal to square root of 5 divided by pi, which if you simplify this expression, you are getting r is approximately 1.26 kilometers. Remember, the area is square kilometers, so the radius has to be with the unit of kilometers. 
The next example is the volume of a sphere is given to be V is equal to pi r cubed. The question is that if the volume of a ball is one cubic meter, what is the radius? To do this one, again I have to do the same thing. I have to isolate r. First I divide by pi to get rid of pi. So pi cancels with pi. I get r cubed is v over pi. Now, the opposite operation here is to take the root 3 of both sides. This means root 3 of r cubed is the same as root 3 of v over pi. Root 3 of r cubed is r, which is root 3 of v over pi. Now, to find the radius, when the volume is 1 cubic meter, I'm going to replace v with 1. If you use your calculator and find this one, this is almost equal to 0.62 meter. Now, just to refresh your memory how to use your calculator, either if your calculator has a y exponent x on it or the hat sign, what you have to do is you have to type the following in your calculator. First, type open bracket, then 1, then divided by pi, let's say 3.14, close bracket, then the hat sign, okay, for exponent, but this one is root 3. The root 3, we will see in next lesson, is going to be really 1 over 3. Now, 1 over 3 is 0.333. Now, if you do this one, you are going to get approximately 0.62.